Cassidy crowd was on hand at the beautiful Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium on a beautiful day in Memphis to see Tennessee meet Memphis State. Two former volunteer players meeting as head coaches. Rex Dockery of Memphis State in his first year, Johnny Majors of the Volunteers of Tennessee. Hard fought game through the first half. Tennessee scored late in the first half to grab the lead and then dominated the second half to win the football game 28 to nine. Tennessee with a big victory in West Tennessee. It was an outstanding game, John, in my opinion, from our standpoint. We played a team uh, in Memphis State that I had a lot of respect for, and our team did, and our staff did, going into the ball game, because they played their opponents very tough. They played uh, outstanding, aggressive football. They'd been in every game they'd played. They'd, they'd beaten Georgia Tech impressively. And frankly, it took uh, our best effort to win the ball game the way we did. Uh, it was a beautiful day in every way, certainly from the score standpoint, the way we played. Beautiful weather, you couldn't ask for anything better with the weather. And uh, I just uh, I just think it's a real tribute to our coaches and, and, and to our young men for bouncing back the way they did and practice like they did last week with the attitude of respect for Memphis State, but also with the attitude that we were gonna go out and do what it took to win. It was a complete team victory from every standpoint. And we're set to watch it right now as we pick up the action in the first period of the game in Memphis, Tennessee. And there you see that Memphis State is in possession as they've taken the opening kickoff. They've got the ball first down and 10 to go at the 39-yard line as they come running to the right side. And there's number 77 Wampler making the stop on number 20 Wiley after a gain of a yard to the 40 and it's going to be second and nine and here to tell you about it the coach of the volunteers Johnny Majors. John I knew going into the ball game a good tackle by Jackson number one uh, a sophomore and also a freshman Ricky Hope uh, I believe was second man up going to the ball game I felt like that our defense had to come up with more aggressive play and more turnovers from our standpoint to win the ball game against Memphis State. It's third down and eight speaking of turnovers there you see quarterback <clears throat> Thomas Smith for Memphis eight back to throw and here it is a very good play by sophomore Joe Kozart from Sweetwater Tennessee big play gives us good field position early in the ball game and so Tennessee has it first down and 10 to go after the interception of the pass by Joe Kozart it's first and 10 at the volunteer 47 yard line our team Steve at quarterback I think our team was definitely ready to play we had some of the best practice sessions Steve's back to pass here a little slow get the ball to Hancock. He was open early, a little slow getting it to him. But I think our team was ready to play. We practiced extremely well, and we knew we had to come up with some turnovers on defense and low turnovers offensively to win against Memphis State. It's second down and 10. Alatori back to throw again. Here's the pass, complete. Short pass to Mike Coper. Mike has very good hands. He's been a steady performer for us, shown us good leadership. He's blocked well. and. You get the ball around Mike, he'll catch it. Second down, well, that's enough for the first down on a gain of 11 yards. It's first and 10, and it's down to the Memphis State 42-yard line, and crashing straight up the middle goes Doug Furness for a gain of seven to the 35. And Doug, for about the third week in a row, running with very good strength, good second ever. You saw him turn and spin there to get every yard he could get behind, better blocking up front. There's Furness again, and you might note as Tennessee lines up with the serious injury problems in tailback, it's third down less than a yard, a single setback behind the quarterback allegory and three flankers. Let's see what happens here, John, and we'll talk about that. I hope we make this first down and keep the chains moving. It's third down less than a yard, and this is Furnace, and this is the first down. Not a lot of extra blocking, but good effort by Furnace. The last turn gave him the first down. I want to say something about the offensive line. It was a challenge for them, too, because our offensive backs were were very thin and I think we had our best performance from the offensive line blocking on the run and certainly outstanding blocking from the standpoint of pass protection. Alatori passes, it's complete. Hancock doing a very good job on the short pass and then evading the defender and making every inch that he could possibly make. 13 yards all told and another first down for Tennessee. <laughs> nothing to nothing the score. The Volunteers have moved the ball to the 17 yard line. Back to the I formation and we'll show you the look of the three wide outs. There's Furnace, almost scores here. Goes to the one foot line. I believe that's the first time we went with two backs. We were concerned about having no backs except two freshmen, Johnny Jones and Jim Cadell, who've been running with the junior varsity. So we went with a full back, one back set most of the game. It's first down and goal to go at the one yard line. Alastory sneaking, didn't quite get there, shoved back by that very quick Memphis State defense. But he moved the ball, as you see, to within a football length. Same play coming up, John. I think you'll see a little better surge in the middle, and Alatori, I believe, will follow up. 
the middle of our line. Lee North at center who did a good job. Our guards, Lee North at center, senior with a good leadership. And it's Bill touchdown, May Tennessee. Bill Mayo and uh, Steve Knight, a freshman and a sophomore. In the middle of the line doing well. Wide, uh, Reves, another freshman, kicking our extra point attempt with Jeff Oshevsky and holding. And the kick is up, and as the referee indicates, the kick is good. So Tennessee jumps off to a 7-0 lead, moving 53 yards in nine plays. And there you see 826 left to go in the first quarter. It was a good drive, John. And number one, the defense gave us field position. And number two, our offense handled it very effectively with good poise and good execution. Reves kicked off very, very well. Come on. Doggone it. Should have had that one. It's recovered, however, by Dion at the 22-yard line of the Tigers. Memphis State trailing now 7-0, first down 10. Told Bobby Jackson early in the week, he said, Bobby, we're going to have five turnovers on defense to win. He said, yeah, coach, next thing he wants a million dollars. He said, no, Bobby, just five turnovers. Wiley with the ball, hit in the backfield. As Tennessee penetrates with Reggie White, no gain on the play, and it's second down 10. And we did get five turnovers and a much better effort. Uh, you have to win with good kicking, which we had Saturday. And you have to win with good defensive play that's aggressive and turns over the ball to your offense. This is Smith looking to throw. The pass is incomplete, intended for Wiley. <laughs> it's behind him, and it's third down 10. I believe we had good coverage on the play and had good coverage most of the day. Our backs appeared to break to the ball somewhat better. Get your hands up, Johnny Williams. The pass is complete, and it's taken there by Parker. Better pursuit. We had about five white shirts around the ball. Willie Galt. Turning punch. Willie is using very good judgment on handling punts and kickoffs lately. He's getting better all the time. His sure hands, using good judgment when to return, when to fair catch. This is Willie Gauld on Supert's punt, and Gauld running to the far sideline, as you see. Well covered by Memphis State. Very good coverage over the field. So the Volunteers leading 7 to nothing, go on offense mm -hmm. now in the first period of the contest. At the 37-yard line, we it's have first down 10. Three wide receivers in the game, John, with one back or fullback. Well done, Alator to Hancock. Good throw and good catch. We went the ball game, didn't, we didn't think James Berry would play, but warming up today was the first time, warming up Saturday, he looked like he could go full speed for the first time, and we played him more than what we thought we could. Alatori completing the pass to Hancock again to the right side for a gain of three, and it's still third down and three to that go. That little cornerback, number two, is aggressive, and that's a fine tackle on his part. So that was Chapman, of course, yes. who this year, Chapman. as you know, has blocked three punts and a field goal. He's very aggressive and a very fine football player, in my opinion. Alatori. Good protection. Good in protection. Complete. Good protection on our part in the offensive line, but good coverage on Memphis State's part, and now Jimmy Colquitt is back to punt. We platooned our punters at times. As in the past, uh, Jimmy Colquitt kicks the longer kicks, and of course, did a very good job again. And John Warren kicks the shorter kicks, hangs it good and high when we're about midfield. Sliding forward to make it on the fair catch is Parker at the 23-yard line. It's first down 10. This is Beckton. Lamont Holt really stacked the play up. He might not have made the tackle, but he stacked the play up, and I see Johnny Williams. That's our second team defensive line, and we've been playing them earlier in the ball games recently to give us experience and depth and to give us some uh, rested people in the fourth quarter. Filtering through the right side for a gain of three is Beckton. Studdowey helped on the first tackle. We had a good contingent. I mean, a good in, num good in numbers and also good in quality from Memphis in that ball game. Joe Cozart did a good job playing off the blocker, making the play initially. I believe Holtz over there second, maybe Mike Cover third. That's correct, and Supert is in to punt once more on fourth down a yard to go. You saw the measurement a moment ago, and here, the kick the punt. In game, John, I knew had to be ours. I didn't know going to the game it would be ours, but I knew it would have to be ours to win because Memphis State had played very good defense, and our kicking game again performed very, very well. Memphis State covering the punt on that particular occasion well, so it's first and 10 for Tennessee at the 34-yard line. Alatori, Furnace, and stopping him, Evans. Well played by an aggressive Memphis State defense. They've gotten a lot out of their people. They're not real big, but they're aggressive, play with good technique, they're sound. So Tennessee now has second down, eight yards to go. Alatori looking to throw. Here's good protection. The pass. Little high, but good catch. That's Mike Ofer. Memphis. Tight end from Atlanta making the catch. And he's knocked down by Evans again. So it's third down, a yard to go. It was a good catch for Mike. A little high, but he brought it down. <clears throat> Saved an interception or a tip ball. Uh oh. 
a back missed a block there, and the, uh, it knocked us out of a third down possibility to pick up the first down and just a miss, missed assignment right there. So it'll be fourth down, and uh, Jimmy Cockwood is in the punt. This may be a dangerous possibility right here. Their safety, their safety man was, uh, I thought, a good threat at punt returning. He almost broke this one. One man tipped him. He had one Tennessee man remaining between the running back, the returner, and the goal line. So that uh, trip tackle, who was it? Mike Kofer. He's been very effective in punt coverage for the last two years. Carrying the ball this time, sweeping the left side of the oh. line, will be Beckton. Good Gets pursuit. about three yards to the 21. Good pursuit by Mike Kofer and also Lamont Jeffers and Carlton Peoples from Memphis, Memphis Southside. So it's going to be second down and seven yards to go for Memphis State. Tennessee leading seven to nothing. Get your Here's hands up. Now we've got our hands up, but they threw the ball, and it was hit him in the stomach that hit the ground. And so it is ruled incomplete, and it's going to be third down. But it would contain Wamper. It would contain. Look, good job. We just had a replay on that. We can't in the out of town games, but Wamper played out the line. He played off the blocker. He got knocked down, got up, and made the tackle. That was very good effort and good second effort. So, once more, it's fourth down, and into punt will be Zufik. Spirals it downfield, and Willie Gall backs up, pulls it down, as you see at the 35, and... Well, get what you can, Willie. There's not much to get there. That's where to do it. Got about four, and so Tennessee goes on offense, first down and 10 to go, leading 7 to nothing in the first period. It sure gives you a lot better security and better feeling on the sideline. I know somebody handles those punts and knows how to tuck it away, and uses good judgment. The shakiest thing in the world is to have somebody back there who's flaky and handling punts and kickoffs. Pounding up the middle comes Furnace for a gain of four yards to the 43. Second down Good hold. Good hold. That's out of her line. That would be over Lee North and uh, Kurt Singer, a sophomore, and quite likely our left guard Steve Knight or maybe David James. I can't tell who's in there right now. 11 yards. It's first and 10 for Tennessee at the Tiger 46. Alatori. Uh-uh. Intercepted. That's Evans. No, no, no. I thought he might have, might have broken this all the way. Saved by Alatore and Bill Mayo, first and goal. So the first. return by Evans. Now watch out. And it's going to be first down and 10 to go for Memphis State, trailing in the football game by a score of 7 to nothing. This happened so quick, I almost missed it. I just turned my head. It happened so quickly. And the next thing I know, this back, the number five, he's quick. Parker. Parker's very quick. He started the game, and he's gone. 10 into the end zone, and Memphis State pulls to within one. It's seven to six, Tennessee leading. That's a good play that they have, John. They they use that very effectively against Georgia Tech, and and that Parker and that little, that little Dion uh, run with so much effort. It's really impressive, and uh, that's been a good play for them all year. And it broke for the touchdown. We stopped it most of the day except that play. And the extra point was blocked, no good. So at the end of the first period, the score is Tennessee seven, Memphis State six. We'll see the second period in just one minute. Score at the end of the first period is Tennessee 7, Memphis State 6, and the game being played on a gorgeous day in Memphis, and we're ready now to pick up the action in the second period of the game. And there you see that Memphis State now has that football. A counter play well stopped by our linebackers. Both linebackers <clears throat> stepped up in the hole and met the play. Uh, Mark Burns was in there, and I suppose the other one was Jeffers. It's second down and eight at the Memphis State 22-yard line. We have to keep working on attacking the offense. Otherwise, Johnny Williams, a sophomore, from Fulton, and I see uh, Mark Burns again, junior from Huntsville, Alabama. Third down seven. Quarterback is we, Smith. Got, we have to keep attacking them on defense. We can't play a waiting game. We must make things happen. Hands up, Reggie. Tom Smith passes. Frank Smith catches. It's first down, a 13-yard day. Tackle by Bill Bates. Bill has made so much progress this year, in my opinion, breaking to the football. That's the secret of playing pass defense. That was a well-thrown ball and a, uh, a well-caught ball, but Bill was close to it. He's breaking on it better. We should have gotten our hands up better. Back to throw Smith. Get to him. No, oh, don't leave your feet. Uh, Jackson made the play. Ricky Holt uh, had a chance, but didn't get to him. No gain on the play. It'll be second down 10. Again, the pass is Smith for Memphis State. That was a very good throw and catch. They threw it. The only open spot that could have been completed. Frank Smith, the tight end, makes the catch. It's a gain of four, third down six. That last play, John, was more good offensive execution than it was for the country play. This pass is completed to Knowlton, and Memphis State is moving, trailing seven to six, but they've carried the ball down now to the Tennessee 45-yard line. Two First good, down. 
Two very good plays on their part back to back. Another pass, now they've gotten success. They're gonna come at us again, and they hit us. It's complete again to Frank Smith. 25 yards, it's first and 10 at the Volunteer 20. Tackle by Kozar. Saved a touchdown, possibly. Uh, got our board next here. We're getting uh, backed up on our 20 yard line and four down territory. Dion carries up the middle for a gain of four. It'll be second down and six at the 16. That's that little counter. Dion's not very big, but he sure is tough. He runs with a lot of courage. Tennessee aligning itself defensively against Memphis State. The balls lead seven to six in the first half. I respect any young man that plays a game with courage. And we've got to straighten up now, folks. Got to take it to him. Beckton. Full contain on our part. Sweeping the right side for a gain of eight, and it's first down goal at the eight-yard line. Memphis State's coming in. It's going to have their power set in the backfield. Three backs, men in motion. Beckton. We've got to play. Big stop for Joe Kozart. That's a good stop. It looked like they might have scored in that play. Kozart makes a good tackle. You like to see people lock them up, put their arms around them, and stop them in their tracks. We need to get better at that week after week. It's second down and goal. Ball resting at the five-yard line. This is Parker, and this is Dion. Better play. Cooper at the bottom of the stack. 47 is Jeffers. It's third down and goal. Ball at the four. Got to him. That was uh, Barrel Harper on the backside and well covered by Joe Kozart. We, we had the safety man coming on that play and he made the quarterback throw it badly, and, but uh, Kozart had it covered anyway, and now they settle for a field goal attempt. We had blocked their extra point after their touchdown with a 7-6 lead. I think you're going to see penetration here. House, as Memphis State, I don't know whether deliberately or not. I think they did. To get a better angle, moving the ball back five yards. House from Sweetwater we, sends it up. We tipped this ball. I don't know whether Reggie White tipped it or Dale Harper. I think maybe Reggie White tipped it. Knocked this, the end over end off of it, but it went through the uprights. And so it's Tigers 9, ball 7 with 3.29 to go in the first half. And Memphis State has grabbed the lead. Kicking off, it's going to be House. Our offensive uh, unit hasn't... Uh, done much since our first drive, which was a good one. Galt. Almost broke this. Almost. Uh oh got it from behind. Down at the 20-yard line, and Tennessee goes on offense first down 10. 9-7, to seven, Memphis State. Alatori. Run now, run. The boy furnace. All right. Make a few more yards. Kleimeyer was there on the tackle after a pickup of two. The balls. With Lee North at center, Alatori at quarterback, Mayo is a guard on the right side, Matthews the tackle, Furnace. Good effort, good effort, good effort, and some good blocking on the left side of the line on the part of Mike Cooper and, of course, Lee North in the middle. And... There's a gain of 10, and Tennessee has picked up a first down at the 32-yard line. First down 10. Right back pass. Incomplete, intended for tight end Mike Cooper. Overthrown, it's second down 10. We're kind of sputtering now, John. We have been for a period of a, a little over a quarter. We need to get something going. Drop back pass again. Two minutes to go in the first half. Good protection, but uh, well, they're playing the state. They got their hands up. Montgomery tips the ball. It's incomplete, intended for Barry. It's third down 10. Again, Alatori. Good protection, plenty of time. Well done, and a good tackle. Well done from Alator to... Uh, Willie Galt. Uh, and there's number two. He's tough. But Tennessee is a bit shy of the first down, as you see, and it's going to be fourth down in a yard and into the ball game with less than two minutes to go. I thought about going, going for it on fourth, but I saw the stakes. Uh, they brought the chain out. It looked like a close to a yard, and that's uh, kind of a dangerous thing. And if it works, it's good. If it doesn't work, uh, you... Wish you could bite your tongue and take your decision back, so we decided to punt. Parker receives the punt and steps out of bounds, stopping the clock at the 10-yard line. 1.37 to go. <laughs> Memphis State deep in its own territory, leading by a score of 9-7, to seven, nearing the end of the first half of the game. And we have a very good field position now, John. We need to stop them here, try to get a chance to get a field goal, which would put us in the lead. Memphis State's trying to come out. Lateral, maybe. Lateral, get on the ball. Might have been ruled incomplete as a forward pass, and so it will be second down and 10, again, stopping the clock. Looked like a possible lateral, didn't it? Pitch. Well done, backside. 
and onside pretty well. Castillo was there, gain on the play of about a yard, and Tennessee uses a timeout to stop the clock. Maybe that was Castillo, maybe in Whopper? Could have been. 108 to go. There's Whopper. Stay with him now, uh, Stick. We attack on. Reggie That's White. Reggie White. Yes, he's there to help out on that one, and it's a gain of a yard to the 12, and Tennessee uses another timeout. Stop the clock twice in a row here to save the clock. Good effort. The punt. Galt starts left, cuts back to the right, slips, and is tackled, as you see, <clears throat> in the vicinity of the Memphis State 47 and a half yard line. It will be for Tennessee with 55 seconds to go. Tennessee having one timeout remaining, first down 10. Alatori. Uh oh, took that ball. Ripped down by Latham. We're not going to stay in the pocket a little bit longer there, but uh, they trapped us. Now we're back. Not getting much done again offensively. Good poise there, staying in the pocket now. Pass is completed. Gain of four yards to Willie Galt. Tennessee has used its final timeout to discuss the play. <clears throat> and with 22 seconds to go in the football game, the Volunteers line up third down and 12 yards to go. There are a lot of things you can call here, but a lot of them don't work. This, this just happened to be. Here's the pass. It is complete golf. Watch him turn it on. At the 20, 15, 10. Oh, that's it. That, Tight rope into the end zone for the touchdown. Two moves, Jones. You see the first move he made up about the 40-yard line. He made a little dip inside, go back outside, and down about the seven-yard line. He made another dip inside, made the last defender miss him. That was good effort on his part. Very good running, and we had good uh, good protection up front, good pause by Alatori. Willie was telling me about that before we got on the plane. as Coach, I think I set those two guys up. As I was on the opposite side of the field, I said, Willie, I didn't think you'd ever get in the end zone. Why don't you turn the afterburners on, you know? <laughs> Well, Tennessee went for two and failed, and so the score at the end of the first half with the Volunteers scoring with only 10 seconds left in the first half, and it's Tennessee 13, Memphis State 9. We'll talk at halftime with the coach of the Volunteers in just one minute. Time of the football game at Memphis with Tennessee leading by a score of 13 to 9. We touched briefly, Coach Majors, on the offensive adaptation with Tennessee having three wide outs, being three flankers, two to one side, one to the other, Galt, Hancock, Taylor, or Miller, whoever it might be, uh, the strategy there, was that really occasioned by the fact that Tennessee has lost tailbacks Morris and Coleman and Barry was slowed? Yes, John, and uh, with, uh, with, you take uh, Morris is quite likely out for the season. Coleman has not played in the last three ball games after being established as number one uh, some three weeks ago or longer, and even with Carlton Armstrong out, we, we only have two backs. Uh, we only felt like we had two backs that had played in that could play in the ball game. Uh, and that was uh, Furnace and uh, Tolls. Now, of course, we had two freshmen that we brought up uh, from the B team, uh, uh, the junior varsity team, both of whom had played one ball, one play in a varsity game, but carried the ball. Johnny uh, Jones, Jones from Munford, from Munford Tennessee. Tennessee, had carried the ball once against Colorado State. We think he's a good prospect. Jim Cadell, Cadell had carried it none in the varsity competition and didn't feel like they could carry the whole load, even though they're good prospects, we think. But Barry showed up, and as the game went on, got a lot more play. And, we went in the ball game trying to utilize the place where we had most of our depth, and that is the wide receiver area. Put a lot of burden on our offensive line and also on uh, the fullback to carry the running load that they had to carry during the game. So Tennessee leads at the end of the first half by a score of 13 to 9. We'll be talking more here at halftime with Coach Majors in just one minute. Memphis State, the game being played in Memphis. The Volunteers lead by a score of 13-9. Memphis State, to me, a very impressive team. Very aggressive and very impressive. Yes, I had respect uh, going into the ball game. Uh, and I also think that our team did. I tried to sell our team on it, but I think after watching the films, they were impressed with Memphis State. We had some of the best practices we've had. Uh, I also would like to say that I'm very pleased with the way our football team has bounced back after some adversity. And at times, I felt like that we need to be more aggressive. We have, I think, one of the finest group of young men I've ever been around. I've said this many times to our coaches and also to the players and to my wife and uh, friends of mine. We've had, some, we've had some great kids. We've had less problems off the field I've ever had, knock on wood. Uh, and that's very pleasing. And I think maybe that's one reason that they do respond and come back. I just hope they keep getting more aggressive on the field because <laughs> you can be a real gentleman off the field and uh, go to church and... Respect your mother and father and your people that count and still be tough as heck on Saturday, I believe. We'll be seeing the second half of the game after this brief pause for station identification.
Memphis, Tennessee and Memphis State as the second half is set to get underway at the Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium in Memphis. And there you see as we pick up the action, Tennessee's going to have that football and it will be Steve Alatori at quarterback. We pick it up with the Volunteers first down and 10 at the 37-yard line, leading 13 to 9. Now Memphis State started going their next, so they're coming back at us. They're, they're stuffing the, little, the middle a little bit better right now. The pitch the on the plays. Anthony Hancock. Good blocking and we had Porter. it set up well. Oh, look at that. David James makes a fine block downfield and good second effort. That's a good downfield block. He stayed on his feet, knocked the defender down and stayed after him again. A pickup of 21 yards and Tennessee has it first down and 10. Draw play. Okay, Barry. Good blocking to the middle of the line. We have uh, Matthews at right tackle for Memphis Hamilton. We have James at right guard, North at center, Steve Knight, sophomore from Abingdon, Virginia. Now that's good running and good blocking for, uh, by the people I've just named up front. And, and it's Furnace crashing up the middle for five and a first down at the 30-yard line. And for Pavnik's at left tackle. We played quite a few offensive linemen Saturday too, John, as well as all of our receivers. We played our receivers early. Alatori's passing downfield. It Ooh. is incomplete. Well covered by Memphis State, but maybe uh, a few feet further and a little more arch, you might have had a big one. But it's good. broken up by neighbors and it's incomplete. But good play defensively, so you can't take something away from the opponents when they do it well. Tennessee again lining up. Number two is Taylor, and he goes the reverse the other way. Block. Right, Steve Nice trying to make a block. Okay, for Pavnix, uh, but Memphis State recognized the reverse quicker on this play. And it's Cannon making the stop after a gain of four, third down six. Big play for Memphis State, I believe, coming up. Uh, Sideline pass, well thrown by Alatori, and good job of Dalton, well, except to drop the ball. It's fumbled and it is recovered by Neighbors. Galt made the reception, was hit and fumbled, and Neighbors recovers for the Tigers, stopping the drive and taking over at the 18-yard line. That was a big play. Uh, very well executed on our part, but we didn't hold on to the football and very costly. So now Memphis State has stopped Tennessee. They trail 13-9. The Tigers with the ball, and here's the pitch. With it is Wiley. All right, well done. Good alert play. Bill Harper, I believe. He was there and to make Memphis the stop North for North a loss Another Memphian representing the University of Tennessee Volunteers. Come on, Brian Ingram from Hamilton. Pass incomplete intended this time for Frank Smith. I think the pressure that Ingram put on the quarterback made him throw it a little bit quickly and threw it behind the, uh, the receiver. Bootleg on play action. Here's a screen setting up to Wiley. There he goes, as you see, to the 20. Ah. He's nailed by Jackson as he gets out to the 25. It's short of the first. It's fourth down and three, and Suford will come on to punt. We'll take that. A couple of missed tackles. We kind of arm tackle a couple of times, but Jackson uh, saved the first down. Here's the punt. Sailing downfield, and Willie Galt pulls it down over his shoulder, Smith. stumbles and falls at the 28-yard line. You know, John, uh, in football the last several years, uh, probably the last eight or 10, the cleats have been shortened. I think it's helped prevent knee injuries and ankle injuries, but it it hurts your traction on a wet field. Memphis State or Memorial Stadium had a terrific rain over there last week against Southern Mississippi. Three and a half to four inches of rain. And a few parts of the field were still a little bit wet, but it was basically in good condition. This is Alatory passing, and it's caught. Anthony Hancock. That's right. Would have turned up. Anthony's mother's been down here a couple of weeks from Cleveland, Ohio. She's thinking about moving to Knoxville or Nashville. And what a marvelous young man he is. He's a gifted athlete. He's a marvelous athlete, but a good student, a terrific young man. A gain of four yards that time by Barry after the first down catch by Hancock. And so now <clears throat> Tennessee's got it at the 44, second down and six. In the third period, Tennessee leading 13 to nine. <clears throat> Memphis State, four man front, Alatori behind North. Trap first. play, trap play, well done in the middle of our line. Way to go, Doug. Doug Furnace. You know, Doug Furnace uh, graduated from Northeast Oklahoma Junior College, the same place that Bill Pace graduated before he went on to play college football, and Doug Matthews graduated from. And he's been a very, very big help. Doug Matthews recruited him. Got 97 yards total in this game. Here's the pass after the first down run by Furnace, completed in the right flat to Hancock for a gain of nine to the 33 at second down, a yard to go. You know, Furnace again. He's powering behind the blocking of the middle three, and Tennessee's got another first down at the 29. The three people I just mentioned are from Allen Cockrell country and Mickey Mantle country, and Steve Owens, a great running back, and Billy Bessels. Uh, that's really a small area there, ready for some fine baseball and football talent in the past years. And here is Furnace spinning forward for a gain of four more, <laughs> making it second down and six yards to go. 
Tennessee moving deeper and deeper in Memphis State territory. The Volunteers lead by a score of 13 to 9. Doug Matthews also recruited Alan Cockrell. Here's Barry. All right, watch this run. Watch it. Watch him take the ball. Both hands on it. Very, very good second effort. James Berry, 14 yards, breaking he, tackle after tackle, and the Volunteers have it first down at the 11. He hardly practiced this week because his ankle was worse than it was the week before, but he looked good in warm-ups and decided to go with him. Memphis State uh, is not letting up. They stopped us there for virtually no game. About a yard. It's going to be second down, mm -hmm. nine to go for the first down, ten to go for a touchdown, with Tennessee leading 13-9, to nine, nearing the end of the third period. We try to sweep to Hancock here. Ah! Didn't get much. Not much at all, and Tennessee will have the ball third down, still nine yards to go. I believe we had two uh, fullbacks in the game that time and Hancock in the backfield, so it was kind of a makeshift backfield. And you see Tennessee jumping and penalty flags flying, and the Volunteers are going to be penalized on this play, five yards for being offsides. As we near the end of the third period, Tennessee leading by a score of 13 to 9. Illegal procedure is the call. Whatever we need and whatever we do here, we must avoid the big loss and try to come out with a field goal at the very least right here. And so that's the end of three quarters, and we'll see the final period beginning in just one minute. Tennessee leads by a score of 13 to 9 as the fourth period gets underway, and Tennessee now is moving toward the north end of the football field as you see. And the Vols will have a third and 14 after the five-yard assessment for the illegal procedure. Two back offense now, uh, uh, well, two running backs, fullback and tailback. Uh, Alatoria alertly throws the ball to Hancock, and Hancock picks up about six or seven, John. What's the but it? That's exactly right. Six yards on the mm -hmm. nose, but that's not quite enough for the first down. And on fourth down, eight yards to go. This is a big attempt right here, a very big attempt. We're only leading four points right now. Well handled by Shevsky, a slightly low pass. He puts it on the tee and Ravez kicks it through the uprights. So Tennessee moves 62 yards in 13 plays, <laughs> consuming six minutes and one second off the clock. And with 14-15 to go in the football game, the Volunteers lead by a score of 16 to nine. And kicking off will be Fouad Ravez. He kicked off exceptionally well, and our punters handled it well. Handled it well. Now John, I had a Time sure passes on. I had a nephew on the Memphis State football team. My brother Bill's oldest boy, Bobo, is now 19. He goes by Bo now, but it's William Bo Majors II, and he is a freshman, 19 years old at Memphis State on their squad as a young linebacker. Very, very interesting. I had a chance to visit following yeah. the game. Talked to Rex Doctor about it before the game, and uh, Rex played, uh, I coached here when my brother Bill was coaching at Tennessee, and Humble. Oh, good job. Mike Castile calls the fumble. Mike calls the, uh, calls the fumble. We, who cut the ball? I can't tell. Oh, it's right, covered no. by Jeffers. At least he says he did. <laughs> I think he's letting it For all the world to know. And Tennessee has it first down and 10 to go. And the balls <laughs> have now widened their lead to 16 to 9. And it's first and 10 at the 35 yard line. I told Lamont Jeffers tonight, I said, I wish he was going to be around here three or four more years. He's the type of person you just hate to ever see leave your football team. He's a good leader. And James great Berry, character, great character. And is another senior human. for three to the 32. Second down, seven, the ball's in the I formation. Alatori. Well done. Good tackle on Memphis State. That's Stapleton. Stapleton. But uh, good job by Mike Miller, too, holding on the football with a good tackle like that. Alatori, a good poise. Good fake. Ah, lay it out there. Lay it out there. Ah. Intercepted. Memphis State. Not there. Not there. That's Stapleton intercepting the pass from Alatori, mm. returning it to the 19, and it's going to be first down and 10. Mm -hmm. Tennessee continues to lead 16 to 9. We must avoid that type of turnover. We're getting close to field goal territory. Smith and passing, and who's here? Daryl Harper for an interception. Daryl Harper from Memphis. I think those young men from Memphis were very excited about playing, and I think they helped get their teammates up uh, also. So Tennessee goes right back on offense as the two teams exchange interceptions. It's first down and 10 at the Tiger 48-yard line. Alvin Tolles. Stacked up by the middle of the Memphis State line and their linebackers. And so it's going to be second down, eight yards to go. Tennessee leading 16 to 9. Steve Alatore rolling. Good protection, good protection. Turn it up now, Steve. Tuck it away. 
Always tuck that ball and protect it. Our running backs, John, has just done an exceptional job holding on to football the last four weeks. Basically, the only turnovers we've had have been, have been at quarterback. Our a wide receiver dropped the football once in the Saturday ball game. Back to throw, Alatore. Long pass downfield. It is incomplete. Nobody around. I think the receivers are covered, and quite likely he alertly threw the ball away. What's this play here? John, John Warren. Warren. And we're kicking from uh, we'll see Memphis the State in the field. Gets on the six. We have it well covered. And that's uh, number 50, Jeff McMichael. He's a sophomore from Webb School in Knoxville. Alertly making a play with a bunch of other alert volunteers. So now Memphis State has it backed up deep in its own territory. First down and 10 at its four-yard line. That's Smith. McMichael. It's McMichael rather than McMichael's. Straight well up done. the middle comes Dion. No gain. Well done, defense. Tennessee 16, Memphis State 9. Smith, the quarterback, after the shifting tight end, moves from the right to the left. Okay, okay. Get to him, Jackson. Jackson running out. Reggie White makes the play, and then Jackson for the safety. And this is... This result in a two-point effort on our part. We immediately get field position because they kick off from their 20-yard line. And we're about to take the ball on another touchdown drive. Leonard Jackson vaulting into the end zone as quarterback Smith came off play action, thinking about throwing, never had a chance, and so into punt on the free kick from the 20-yard line will be Suford. Tennessee's lead is now nine points, 18 to nine, in the fourth period of the game. Thus far in the fourth quarter, Memphis State has had it for three, four, five downs. We're going to set the we're going to set the wedge back in front of Willie Galt. We have our punt return unit in there, in the deep area, but our kickoff return area uh, with our line and he ends up front. Good field position. There. We start the ball on the 44-yard line of Memphis State. We just got two points, which were good breathers. At quarterback Jeff Olszewski, a senior from Parma, Ohio. This is James Berry. Good play. That's the sweet play, which we hadn't worked on a lot because we didn't think we had the tailback yet, but we used it some during practice, and with Berry in there, we tried it, and it worked very effectively. Gain on the play of eight. Second down and two at the 36-yard line of the Tigers. Tennessee leading by a score of 18-9. to nine. Berry. Another good sweep. Almost breaks it. He's running hard. And it's Barry this time for 13 yards. It's first down 10 at the 23-yard line of the Memphis State Tigers. Another thing I like about Barry, he not only runs hard, but he's intelligent. He's an uh, excellent young man, but he holds on the football very well, John. I think he only had one fumble last year, and I believe he's only had one this year. So Tennessee has it first down and 10, trying to build on that nine-point lead as Olszewski gives to the fullback. Good effort. Burrowing forward comes Furnace for four to the 19, second down six. And a decent surge up front in the middle of our line, and good effort by our fullback. Memphis State in a wide tackle six look. A little bit too much cutting back, but I can see why he did it. He'd, he'd seen some daylight earlier there, but I believe he might have had more up north and south that time. Ball moved to the 16. It's going to be third down three. Olszewski. This is very All right, good block with a fullback furnace. Very good block. Our line did well there. But Furnace made a key block on the linebacker that sprung Barry for a few extra four or five yards. And it gives Tennessee first down goal at the eight-yard line. The score is now 18-9. to nine. Olszewski looking at an eight-man front and could be checking off at the line of scrimmage. And is. And this is Olszewski lofting the pass into the end zone. Touchdown, Anthony Hancock. Yeah, excellent job. Good throw, good catch. You're not trying to John. <laughs> you know all, see all? Hill. How'd you know he's going to check off there? Oh, I've <laughs> been around you too long, Coach Majors. Here. No, I only have an answer for the time. <laughs> is Fuad Reves for the extra point, and Tennessee builds, as we say, to its lead. It's now 25 to 9 with 8.32 to go, and there were a lot of orange and white shakers there because there were a lot of Tennessee fans in Memphis yes. to see the game. So sell out on a beautiful day. And this is Reves, and there you see teams. drilling it seven yards deep into the end zone. Excellent kickoff. The mm -hmm. kicking game, my gosh, is a real big edge. All right. Well done. Bill Bates is breaking on the ball better every week in practice. You can see it. 
I saw it in the sideline. I saw the ball thrown. I said, oh, gosh, it's going to be a uh, completion. But Bill came about 15 yards, broke toward the ball, and made the play. So, Tennessee on the interception by Bates. Back to throw. Oh, yes. Long pass. Good and fake. Look. It could have been called either way, quite likely, when you get right down to it. You know, if it's a trip, inadvertent trip, it's no pass interference. But there, I don't know. It is incomplete, no penalty marker, and it's going to be second down and 10. I believe Jeff had it right on the button, though. I think he had it right on the mark. Good fake on his part, good fake by the backs, and a well-run pattern by Hancock. Tennessee picks up a yard as it's Barry. Olszewski looking over the defense, back to throw. Barry carries. Gets four this time. And it's fourth down and six, and here is Fouad Reves to attempt a 51-yard field goal. He hit it with a lot of power. And he knew it. It's good. Excellent. 51 yards, and Tennessee <laughs> wins over Memphis State. The final score, 28 to 9. We'll go to the dressing room to visit with the victorious volunteers in just one minute. Tennessee wins over Memphis State. The final score is 28 to nine, and the volunteer record is now four and three, Memphis State one and seven. Bob Kessling is in the dressing room. Let's go down to visit with Tennessee and the volunteers. One of the defensive standouts for the volunteers, Joe Cozart from Sweetwater, Tennessee. Joe makes his first start, makes his first interception also. Joe, congratulations. Thank you. Tell us about your first start, your feelings going into it. I guess you thought that Memphis State was gonna pick on you. Yeah. You know, coming in the game, they had said earlier in the week that they were going to try to throw to my area. and uh, It really didn't bother me that much as long as I played my, you know, played my technique and played the defense. You know, I would be in the right position for anything. Defense made the big plays, and you, I thought you played pretty well. I do, too. It was this victory, I think, is it helped the team a lot, you know, losing last week, and then we come back this week, and it's just a big win, I think, as far as, as, far as our team goes from here. The enthusiasm right now is probably at its highest, the highest it's been all year. Did you make any major adjustments from last week to this week? Well, we didn't really change anything from last week to this week. I think we played our positions better this week than last week and played our techniques right. And, uh, you know, that's basically it. With us now, David James, offensive lineman from Cincinnati. David, the offensive line seemed to play probably maybe its best game. I think we did. Uh, we seem to run the ball a lot better up the middle after having such a hard week last week. We've had such hard weeks. George and Southern Cal, we didn't run the ball well. We worked hard on middle drills this, this week with Coach Fulmer against the defensive line. They helped us a lot. I believe that helped us run the ball better, and our backs ran just great this week. Doug Furness and Alvin Tolles and the James Berry came through, and even he's playing 75 to 80 percent, ran great. And that helped us a lot, make us look good. Okay, now you also used three wide receivers, a slot to one side and a split end to the other side. Did that make your job easier, especially on the running plays up the middle? Uh, no, because they, they played it hard. Like uh, George did with a wide tackle six with a one technique and a three technique. So they were there. It's like one-on-one -on -one blocking for the offensive line. And whether we have three wide receiver, two wide receivers, and it doesn't make any difference for them on the up to right at the middle plays. Defense gave you guys good field position. Oh, great. They did great. This defensive game. They're great. That's all we said about them. Tennessee middle guard Leonard Jackson, Macon, Georgia. Leonard, a big play, I guess, defensively, maybe in the game, was the safety. When uh, you and Reggie were able to double team and get the safety in the end zone, that was a big play. Oh, yes. Well, I seen the guard pull and the center try to come down on him, so I just shot the gap and throw my hands in there, and that caused confusion in the backfield where the quarterback had to hesitate, and then Reggie was on him, and then I hopped on him, and that was it. Today, it seemed like you were around the football more than maybe some of the other games. Well, yes. Well, I don't know. I was just looking more towards hitting anybody really with the ball you know I've been doing that in the previous game but it just haven't been turning out right not like I wanted to but today it did because I guess they try to do a lot of pulling and when they did a lot of pulling I just shot the gap okay Tennessee's defense you think this may be your best effort of the season well like I guess we would have to say yes because we had a lot of turnovers and then a lot of things went our way and we hit hard today defensively and everybody read the keys right I guess we I guess I have to say yes good win for Tennessee oh yes great win for Tennessee Second week in a row, Willie Galt scores a long touchdown on a pass from Steve Alatore. Willie, again, congratulations. Well, thanks a lot. You know, uh, it was just a blessing from the Lord that I was able to do that. I, I got cut down at the line, and uh, it was all like a Willie Galt special, I guess. Uh, I was designed to just run a fly, fly, fly pattern, and uh, the guy cut me down, so I just ran across the middle, and Steve Alatore alertly saw me and threw the ball to me. Steve was also rushed back there, so he had some time to scramble a little bit and found you open. Right. Uh, Steve, he really played a poised game today. 
Uh, he really played a good game in my, my eyes. I, I'm sure the other fellows' eyes also. Uh, that was very alertly him seeing me like that, and because the play was designed to go to Anthony, and he just saw me. Okay, it looked like that they had the angle on you, and I thought maybe they're going to be able to knock you out <laughs> about the 10-yard line. I had to turn, I had to turn the burners there for a little <laughs> while. Uh, I really had to run that time. Uh, they had an angle on me about at the 10. I hesitated a little bit to make them stop a little bit, and then I came on in. The three three wideouts you used today seemed to really open the off offense hey, up. I love that <laughs> San Diego Chargers. <laughs> it really opened it up. Uh, <clears throat> Tennessee strong safety man Daryl Harper with us. Daryl, congratulations on the win. Well, thank you very much. Defense played well, I thought. Well, we came out. We had to establish uh, a defensive game. You know, we were behind at the time going into the half, and we felt like that the defense had to crank it up and felt like the defense had to make a big play for us to take the lead again. And uh, luckily, Willie really got, got a big play going into halftime. I think that turned the whole game around. And also another big play was the safety. I guess that also helped your positive attitude. Yeah, I think that uh, kept our motivation going and just got us pumped up and uh, our dream was flowing more and more. Was the defensive secondary laying back a little bit when you knew Memphis State had to throw in the second half? Well, we was laying for the pass because we knew they had the attackers, but we really didn't know where they was doing a lot of uh, play action, you know, and they tried to stretch uh, me on the sideline and I just, you know, glad I had enough depth to break up and through the ball and make an interception. We asked Leonard Jackson, we'll ask you the same question. Was this Tennessee's best defensive effort of the year? I feel like um, it is uh, because we came out and Memphis State did some good things the first half. They moved the ball against us and, you know, had a good passing game going for a series. And I feel like that we played good the first half, but I feel like that they shouldn't have scored, you know, the points we made off. Uh, a couple of uh, mental breakdowns in our secondary, and they were able to make a long run and score, and, you know, they had a good series passing the ball also. So Tennessee wins in Memphis next week and off week for the Volunteers in two weeks. Tennessee plays Wichita State at Neyland Stadium. Bob Kessling reporting from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. We'll have more comments with Coach Johnny Majors in just one minute. Tennessee wins over Memphis State by a score of 28 to 9. Coach Johnny Majors, final reflections on this victory, which gives your team a 4 and 3 mark. Well, it was uh, it's just about as well as I could expect a team to play uh, under circumstances, bouncing back after, after a defeat the week before and coming back with a practice attitude they had. I just couldn't ask for a better effort on their part and the assistant coach's part. And it put, took all elements to win the ball game. Uh, the, the defense came to the, to the uh, four when we needed them. Knowing that our offensive backs were hurt, our fullbacks ran well, and even when Barry was in there, he did a good job. Our wide receivers, our kicking game did a very good job. The big factor, I think, again, our defense that made some things happen, and for us to win, we've got to take one game at a time, one hurdle at a time. Every game that we win is going to probably be tight, and we have to win by doing the little things better each Saturday and practicing with reckless abandon, practice with good mental application. We won't have nothing will happen easy for us, but. It turns out like it did Saturday to be worth working for. And Tennessee, of course, will have an open date before returning for the homecoming game with Wichita State. We'll see you in two weeks. Till then, for Coach Johnny Majors and your friends at the Athletics Department of the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, this is John Ward saying so long, everyone.